These stories will you be talking about tomorrow. Yesterday, the president and John McCain attacked Barack Obama on Mideast diplomacy. Tonight, Senator Obama strikes back. They're trying to fool you and trying to scare you, and they're not telling the truth. Both Bush and McCain represent the failed foreign policy and fear-mongering of the past. I believe the American people are ready to reject this approach and to choose the future. The latest White House spin? The president wasn't referring to Senator Obama when he compared Democrats to Nazi appeasers, even though the evidence sure makes it seem like that's exactly what he was doing. And all aboard the Double Talk Express, hey John McCain's argument that Obama is dead wrong for suggesting a president should engage with our enemies has a tiny little hole in it. McCain advocated U.S. engagement with Hamas two years ago. They're the government, and sooner or later we're going to have to deal with them in one way or another. How to Stop a Smear 101 with your professor, Chris Matthews. What did Chamberlain Chris. do? Just tell me what he did, Kevin. What did Chamberlain he, do you didn't like? Look. Uh, what did he Chamber do? What Chamberlain did. Tonight's Chamberlain cautionary did tale for hacks without history. And President Bush's supreme sacrifice. Playing golf uh, during a war just sends the wrong signal. What's the right signal, you ask? Bernie, I hear you've been hiding Beasley's gift all around the White House. Uh-oh. From Barney Cam to bass fishing, to hilarious jokes about lying the country into war. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> we'll run down the leisure time activities the president just can't give up in a time of war. All that and more, now on Counting. Now you two run on, I've got a lot of work to do. Good evening. I'm Rachel Maddow in for Keith Olbermann. He'll be back on Monday. This is Friday, May 16th, 172 days until the 2008 presidential election. Appeasement is by definition, quote, the political strategy of pacifying a potentially hostile nation in the hope of avoiding war, often by granting concessions. That's a substantially different thing than talking with another state, negotiating. That is, quote, formal discussions among parties to bring about a resolution to a problem. In our fifth story on the countdown, Senator Obama didn't just fire back against President Bush and Senator McCain for dishonest, divisive attacks, hinting that Senator Obama would appease Iran. He didn't just defend himself from their charges. He also pivoted and went on the offense, confronting them directly on what he called failed foreign policy and fear-mongering of the past. From the campaign trail in South Dakota, Senator Obama responded quickly and forcefully to both the current president and the presumptive Republican nominee to be the next one, saying that their characterization of his foreign policy, of Obama's foreign policy, is nothing short of a lie and that their shared approach to the Middle East is a failure. Our Iran policy is a complete failure right now. And that's the policy that John McCain is running on. He has nothing to offer except the naive and irresponsible belief that tough talk from Washington will somehow cause Iran to give up its nuclear program and support for terrorism. I'm running for president to change course, not to continue George Bush's course. I believe... I believe we need to use all elements of American power to pressure Iran, including tough, principled and direct diplomacy. At a news conference that followed, Senator Obama pointed out that actual diplomacy, you know, talking to other countries, friend and foe, has been central to our American approach to the world until very recently. This whole notion of not talking to people, it, it didn't hold in the 60s, it didn't hold in the 70s, it didn't hold in the 80s, it didn't hold in the 90s, against much more powerful adversaries much more dangerous adversaries. I mean, when Kennedy met with Khrushchev, we were on the brink of nuclear war. When, when, when Nixon met with Mao, that was with the knowledge that Mao had exterminated millions of people. It's a signal of how badly our foreign policy has drifted over the last eight years, how much it has been skewed uh, by the rhetoric of the Bush administration that this should even be a controversial proposition. 
Perhaps the most absurd aspect of the Bush-McCain attack on Senator Obama this week is the claim that Obama isn't even the target because Bush didn't cite him by name. Senator Obama is apparently happy to take that one on as well. Who's this sum that they were talking about? Was this some amorphous sum? Was this just a straw man that they were setting up? And if so, the, uh, what was the purpose of, of the remarks? Man, that's being dis disingenuous. I mean, I, I'm less concerned about uh, whether the remarks were directed against me personally, because, frankly, there is no evidence out there that I've ever t suggested we should engage terrorists. This White House is very is media savvy and knows what it's doing. The implication was that if you uh, object to George Bush's policies of non-engagement, then, you know, you are being soft. Senator McCain's response today in a speech before the NRA was twofold. One, he suggested that fighting an enemy is less reckless than talking to one first. Wow. Uh, second, he suggested that Senator Obama somehow believes the United States has no enemies. You know, it would be a wonderful thing if we lived in a world where we don't have enemies, but that's not the world we live in. And until Senator Obama understands that reality, the American people have every reason to doubt whether he has the strength, judgment, and determination to keep us safe. A lot to talk about with our own Richard Wolf, senior White House correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Hi, Richard. Thanks for joining us tonight. Rachel, good to be with you. You wrote the Newsweek cover story this week about how Senator Obama and his team are planning to battle the Republican machine this year. I think we've just witnessed it in action uh, by, by engaging the Republicans directly on national security, uh, which, of course, is an issue where the conventional wisdom holds that Democrats are weaker. They're always on the defensive. Do you think that we're witnessing a new kind of Democratic candidate, a, a new kind of Democratic campaign here? Well, what we're seeing is a Democratic candidate who isn't twisted into a pretzel because of his initial vote on the war, and then has to explain that against his current criticism of the war, as John Kerry had to do throughout 2004. So uh, Barack Obama is in a different place, in a different place to criticize the war, whether it's Bush's policy or McCain's position. A and you have a campaign here as well that understands that the country is fundamentally different when it comes to war and national security than it was in 2004. And the 2006 midterms showed that. So so you, you have a couple of things. It's not that Barack Obama is special, it's just that he can attack these things in a clearer way because he doesn't carry the baggage. The Republicans have uh, set up this straw man using appeasement as a buzzword, this false notion that just by talking with somebody you're appeasing them, when in reality it's not just talk, you actually have to give the bad guys something in exchange for their cooperation, like Neville Chamberlain ceding part of Czechoslovakia to Nazi Germany. Uh, Richard, th this attack and maybe I'm naive, but this seems kind of more simple-minded than usual to me. It seems like they're going with really thin stuff really early in the campaign. Do you think this indicates maybe that they are, are short of more substantive attack fodder against Obama? Well, and by the way, the administration, the Bush administration, is already offering incentives to Iran and North Korea uh, in terms of a negotiated settlement for their various nuclear programs. So the whole thing really doesn't stack up very well. And I think as a campaign strategy, you've got to wonder if the McCain campaign isn't locked into this 2004 mindset, where appearing tough is more important than what the American people show in poll after poll after poll, which is that they want an exit strategy. They want something to look better. Remember, this war has gone on longer than World War II. If McCain has a way through this, it's to say, I can fight this war smarter and quicker than Bush or Obama because of my experience. He's not saying that right now. Let me ask you one question about your time spent with the Obama campaign recently. Um, the, the McCain response to this was that a spokesperson described Obama's speech today as a hysterical diatribe. Now, you're spending a lot of time during this campaign with Senator Obama. Does anything about the man strike you as ever approaching hysteria? It just struck me as such a weird, um, I guess, misfired attack against somebody who seems as cool and collected as Obama does, maybe even to a fault. It got me thinking about maybe right. by the word hysterical, he meant like he was funny. Ha ha. Uh, yeah, not so funny either. I mean, look, this is a guy who, if you're going to smear him, then do it in a way that sort of rings true. Go for the elitist thing or that he is somehow emotionless. Certainly the Clinton folks really made some headway on those two areas. Um, but uh, the hysteria thing, uh, look, I, I get more hysterical than he does.
Later this afternoon, uh, Senator McCain suggested Obama believes America does not have any enemies, which of course is a ridiculous claim. But do you think that Obama's going to have to spend a lot of time correcting the record on what he's actually said? Uh, is, is that always defense? Will, defense? will that always look bad? Can he do that at the same time that he attacks McCain and Bush like he did today? One of the big failings of the Obama campaign is not using or not finding surrogates to deploy for this kind of thing. Mm. The candidate has to do certain things. He has to rebut certain things, make certain arguments as he's been doing here. But if he's trying to correct the record all the time, he'll get hopelessly distractive and in responsive mode. So the Obama campaign needs to do a much better job of fielding this team of surrogates to bat down this kind of thing, because otherwise he won't have his own agenda to talk about. A unified Democratic Party would certainly help with that, I suppose. Richard Wolf, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Rachel. Richard Wolf of Newsweek and MSN.